Hi everyone, my name is Jacob Norris and I'm currently lead environment artist at NVIDIA. I wanted to give you a bit of an overview into the program Substance Alchemist. It's a great program that allows you to mix and match different substance designer materials as well as creating new materials almost from scratch with all of the awesome generators and tools that are inside of this great program. So starting off, you'll notice we're going to have an Explore, Inspire, Create, and Manage tab here at the top. Explore is where we're just going to basically be able to sort through some of the base materials that are provided to you from Substance Alchemist. You can click on on whatever ones that are in here and there's the 3D viewer and the 2D viewer similar to what you're going to get out of Substance Painter or even uh, Substance Designer. So a lot of the interface should be pretty similar to what you're used to already. You'll also notice here the viewer settings and this is where you're going to be able to change things like the texture resolution, the tiling of your texture, as well as what you're viewing the texture on, and the general environment setup such as the panorama, HDRI, lighting, exposure, and rotation here. Then at the bottom we'll also have our number of samples for displacement and if you wish to have shadows uh, higher quality or not on your renders here. Uh, up in the top right you'll also notice a quick switch option between your viewports if you'd rather have 3D, 2D, or a split. And I'm actually going to go with a full 3D version of this just so you can see what we're doing while we're working. Now if I go back to my resources tab here on the left, what we're gonna do is just create a really simple material based off of uh, a nice what's this say Tverstrudne <laughs> sorry it's a little difficult to read because it's white on like a, a, a lighter material there oh I see my bad we're actually going to be using the raw light brown sandstone material as our base so now if I go into my create tab I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this onto the right here where you start adding layers of materials, generators, and filters. This is going to be our base as like a nice sandstone here. And on top of this, now we're going to go ahead and add a layer for stone wall pattern. You can kind of check some of these out later and I'd say go through all of them and see what each one does because there's going to be a lot of fun and interesting variations you can get just from adding some of these different filters onto your onto your materials. So I'll add the stone wall pattern and you'll notice if we click it we're going to get a pop out here where we can start adjusting all the settings. If you go back to your original raw light brown sandstone you'll also see some of the settings you get here as well as color adjustments and technical parameters you can play with. You'll also see right now the texture is a little bit lower resolution because as I had mentioned the output right now is only at 1024. I'm working in a 1024 resolution because it's going to help the textures update a lot faster until I'm ready to export them. You can if you prefer work in a full 4k resolution but this will definitely make things go a bit slower and depending on the speed of your computer it could just take a bit longer if you're in initial stages of preparing and setting up your material where maybe you don't need to see all the fine grain details just yet. So I'll switch back to 1024. If we go back to our stone wall pattern here, we have a pretty good base already. I kind of want to just get rid of this grime right now because of how I'm going to be setting up this material. So I'm just going to drag and drop this color down into more of a gray so that grime almost just disappears from there. If we want to add tessellation we can also go into our viewer settings here and as I mentioned before under the shader you'll see displacement and we can change this to tessellation. And I keep my settings not not like okay so under the displacement quality this is essentially how 
tessellated your geometry is, you can see it adding more polygons as we go. And after you get up past 0.5, with most materials, you're not going to see a very big difference, and it just starts to weigh your machine down. So I tend to stick around like 0.5 or so for pretty high quality while I'm working. And then just depending how much you want the displacement to, to push the plane or whatever viewer mesh you're using, uh, you can set this to your preference as well. I'm going to keep it around 0.25. Now, if we go back here into our stone wall pattern, we still have the settings up and we can collapse some of these to make it easier in case we want to see a bit more of our mesh here uh, with the material settings on it. You can play with the uh, stones amount, stone roundness, like these are all just the the base settings that come with this filter and as I mentioned you can actually add your own filters, add your own substance materials and set everything up to be really custom so it's great if you're working on teams that people who don't use Substance Designer as much and are maybe a little scared of the node interface can just come into Substance Alchemist and play with all these things really quickly. Now, I'm just going to kind of mess with some of the settings here until I get something that I'm pretty happy with for my overall stones. And generally, when they give you kind of the default setup, it it looks it tends to look pretty good because when they've decided this is ready to go they already have found some settings that hey this is a nice material at this point you know um yeah i have pretty much just moved things around until it's almost back to the default where it was because it does look good at this point now i'm actually going to use this instead of a wall as more of a ground and so what I want to do is I'm actually going to add some snow and some water on top of this. And if we just directly add water on top of here, you'll notice it very evenly covers the surface. And it's just spreading out into the mortar and the cracks between the stones. So if we want to get some more variation in our ground, we can go back down to our stone wall pattern layer underneath the water here. And we're going to actually add a height modulation layer. And you'll see it looks kind of funny at first and it's actually placed it above the water so I'm just going to drag and drop that underneath the water. And if we decrease the bump scale this is basically the warping we're getting on top of here. We're making the scale itself it says decrease the bump scale but you'll notice like where the bumps are, it's getting larger in between those areas. Like Think of it like a noise pattern, and you're scaling down the texture. So what it does is it scales up, essentially, where you're seeing like the size of those warping of the stones here. So I'm going to scale this down a bit more, and then play with the amplitude. Maybe even a little more. Something like that's kind of nice get some variation in there and if we come back to our water you can change the height of the water itself as well and also the edge wetness which is basically going to give us a little bit of gloss right here along the edge if you go into your advanced parameters you can actually change how far into your material that edge wetness goes if you want everything to be covered in some sort of moisture so it's almost like it's raining out. I'm going to get a little bit more wetness along the edges because we're going to be doing kind of like a melted snow and so this is going to help sell that the snow is melting off of the stones and creating these little puddles in here. The background is a bit distracting for me so if I go into my settings here I can turn off is visible in the environment and we'll just get like a nice gradient background and you can change the color of the gradient if you want as well. I tend to keep it a little bit darker with sort of a brightness near the top as if it's like a sky dome and sun's coming down from there. Alright, 
Now let's go ahead and add some snow on top of here. We can actually put this underneath the water because we want that water to be like melted. Whereas this is just essentially covering everything, even the flat areas where the water's at. It still looks kind of cool, but if you want that melted snow look, then this is where we're going to keep it. Now, it has a melted snow slider, but depending on what is underneath the snow, how the height is looking, how the texture and material is set up, the melted snow and all these different sliders are going to react differently with your material. So you'll notice right now it's not really doing much when I change the melted snow, but if we add fresh snow, then that's going to be piling on on top of our material quite a bit more like this. You can increase the flake intensity, and this is going to give us a little bit of bumps on the surface. And now maybe you can go ahead and adjust your texture size to start seeing more of the fine grain detail. I'm going to bring this up to 4096 and we can see a bit better what our final results actually going to look like. Nice. Let me increase the fresh snow just a bit here. And if you smooth the snow out a bit, it's going to make it kind of feel a bit more piled on on top and you're going to lose whatever information is underneath the snow, such as the surface of the stone, which makes the snow feel a bit thicker. If you'd rather go for something that's that's more piled on and it's it's really cold here so it's going to be some pretty deep snow in this case and it's only just now starting to melt from the sun at this point you can see how quickly you can get a a, a material coming together just from dragging and dropping like a couple different default materials as well as some of the interesting layers and default generators and filters that they've provided inside of here. If we go back into the water, you'll also notice there's a little bit of this kind of dirt on top, which you can either enable that, turn it on or off, and adjust all the settings for that, as well as the color of the dirt or the sludge, which is actually what's going to be underneath. Think of it like like kind of like a lake where stuff's building up and sludging up underneath there. So at this point, let's go ahead and say that this material is done. Now, if we want to export it off to the right, we'll see export right here, and you can export current view. And this allows you to either export like a nice substance file, uh, SPSAR, Targa, TIFF, all the standard settings. We're going to go with PNG and just do some of the, the defaults that it's already got here on the left. We'll also increase our resolution to 4096 and then you can set up your output path. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is in my tutorials and we're going to call this one Snowy Stones. I could have said Cold Stones but I might get in trouble for that. <laughs> so I'll select the folder and then the material snowy stones and it'll actually create a mater uh, folder for you so I'm kind of stony stones <laughs> let me change that back to snowy stones it's really stony stones we got here <laughs> they live in California so snow stones uh, and then like I said it's going to double up on the, the folders but that's fine and now I'll just export this and you'll see the progress off to the right as it begins to export the textures you've created. And now you've made your first material. So I'd say jump in here, start playing with it, go through some of the resources they provide. And if you go back, uh, so you'll notice we're in the base materials. You click these three dots, it'll take you up a level. And you'll actually have some atlas generators here as well. And if we come back just into our explore tab, we can play with some of these materials without having to adjust that texture or the material we were under the create tab and so from here you can just kind of view some of these cool atlases that you'll also be able to place onto your materials in different ways if you want so i'm not going to cover that 
right now, and I haven't covered the Inspire tab as well, but this is just sort of a general overview for you to start playing with the program, getting used to the, the interface, and maybe just making some, some interesting materials with some of the default settings and the default setups that they've provided for you. We'll cover some of these in the next videos, and for now, I hope you have fun with this, and thanks a lot. Take care.